Welcome. I am Ernie Goss, Professor of Economics and McAllister Chair here at the Hyder College of Business at Creighton University in Omaha, Nebraska. This is Hyder on Business. Today, this video is talking about the, of course, in the news, Russia's invasion into the Ukraine, into Ukraine, and what it means to businesses, what it means in terms of economics. I am joined by Tony Hendrickson, the Dean of the College of Business here at Creighton University. He will tell us a little bit about himself before we move on. Tony, tell us, get a little bio for the audience out there. Yeah. Well, thanks, Ernie. It's great to be here with you. Uh, you know, I spent 15 years in business before um, I returned to academia and got a PhD, mm -hmm. et cetera. Um, was vice president of a trucking company, did an IPO and an ESOP plan and worked for uh, Arthur Anderson, I know they're now defunct, but uh, uh, they were very good in the day. And uh, uh, so I had a lot of great uh, experience and opportunities there. Uh, and I've been Dean here for uh, 17 years now. Yeah, so I'm, I've been part of that for yes. 17. Even yes. more than you, actually. That, you, you have, <laughs> you have. You were here when I got here. I was here when everybody, I yes. was here when the Creighton was <laughs> yes. here. When, when, the, when, Moses, <laughs> when Moses was born, when right? The Creighton brothers founded this institution. <laughs> oh, but back to, the, now to the sure. question. How did, how does uh, the Russian invasion of, of Ukraine, how is it gonna affect businesses in the nation, in the region, in this part of the country? I think, I think globally, uh, it's going to affect energy and, and some supply chains. Very specifically, I think it's going to affect uh, agribusiness mm -hmm. uh, because of the some of, somewhat because of the sanctions that we've put on all Western mm -hmm. uh, democracies have put upon Russia, uh, especially in terms of fertilizer. That the ag industry gets a lot of fertilizer from Russia or did. In I'm the sorry, past. tripled in price. Now it's going even higher. Right. And it's going to be very difficult to get. So there's, there's going to be a sourcing issue. Uh, obviously, the energy. Uh, we all know that we could uh, rectify the energy issue by using our own resources, but uh, that's going to take a, a change in policy from our administration, and, and then it's going to take some time to ramp that up. That's not going to be just a spigot you can turn on. So I think that that's going to have some implications, and, and because energy is such a key component to everything that happens, uh, it's going to have ripple effect throughout the rest of the supply chain. It will, and uh, according to our surveys, and you know as well as I do, we conduct two, two surveys a month here at Creighton University of business manufacturers, and then we survey bank CEOs in rural areas of the nation. And it's already, we're seeing it last month, our uh, confidence index declined to a record low level. In other words, we haven't seen anything like this and we, since uh, 1994 when we began the survey. So confidence, economic confidence is down in, in the pits, so to speak. And of course, as you say, prices, we're going to see higher prices. There's little doubt about that. Particularly now, that's good for the farmer, good for agriculture, good for the part of the country we're in now, but for the nation in terms of revenues. But on the cost side, you've got costs rising even more so. So that's a real issue out there. And uh, it's already being telegraphed back. Uh, you know, the President's uh, State of the Union address, he talked about, wow, I'm, I, we got to do something about this. No, something should already be done when he cut the Keystone Excel pipeline, uh, cut it out. In other words, the Obama administration had proved it. It came through with the Trump administration continuing and then finally killed it. First, right. first week he was in office. Well, then don't cry, don't cry about higher oil prices unless you're prepared to do something about it and they are doing the wrong thing you're talking about in my judgment a releasing from the strategic reserves in Louisiana and Texas releasing three million barrels of oil I mean that's that that'll hardly that, that, uh, that's going to take us about a day and a yeah, half I don't even run your SUV I know right. for very long and mine either I mean right. although we have fuel efficient cars so uh, yeah and but that's that's what we're seeing and what I mean I, what does a what is, can a business do to protect itself or, or take advantage of this situation? Well, it's going to be tough for uh, in the ag industry in particular because I think those producers are going to be squeezed on the cost side, mm -hmm. yep. and uh, eventually prices will 
you know, we do live in a free market or quasi free market system. Uh, and not as price, free as we'd like not, it. Not as free as we'd like it. Uh, prices, the market will respond and prices will have to increase that, that they're able to get further uh, production. But uh, in the short run, that's not going to happen. And uh, it, they're going to be squeezed. Uh, it will be uh, advantageous to suppliers of the inputs uh, because they will be able to uh, use this as uh, a reason to increase their prices that you know supply short and therefore you know it's uh, as you often say it's the uh, not the good idea of supply and demand but the laws, the laws of, supply of supply and demand demand and the administration not not just the administration politicians are telling they were intentional about this to begin with to yes. a year over a little over a year ago they were saying hey we want they they didn't say it out loud but you heard you heard it uh, you could hear it if you listen carefully we're going to we want the price of oil to go up Absolutely. it's just now we didn't we didn't really mean that much my goodness maybe we thought we were thinking maybe sixty dollars a barrel seventy maybe right. this 110 120 you're, you're exactly right i mean even the trump administration had some heartburn when oil dropped below fifty dollars a barrel well, negative you know remember yeah. negative negative prices of oil and i'm sure all the viewers are out there negative i didn't know that Yes, it was negative, meaning you just there were ships off the sh off off our coast couldn't get in. They they were loaded with oil. How do you get rid of it? You t pay somebody to take it. You know that's what we saw, and that's what we're seeing. So anyway, well that's uh, that's a wrap up here. At least uh, anything else you want to add to this, Tony? And no, it'll be interesting to see how this all plays out. Okay, well thanks, Tony. Today we've talked about the business impacts and the economic impacts of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, what it means to businesses, what it means to the economy. And until we meet again, our video number two, we'll be talking about the impact and what will happen with the Federal Reserve when they meet again on March the 16th. Until we meet then with Hyder on Business, may your economic cup runneth over, and thank you.